hi guys. I am so excited to do this. I know I've been making people wait forever and we're just going to jump into it. Um, the new pack is called Pacific Northwest. Um, PNW for short. I think that's easier to say than Pacific Northwest, but that's what this pack reminds me of the tones, like the deep greens and the sort of teals and <laughs> just the really soft finish of a lot of these just reminds me of, um, it's actually where I grew up. I grew up in Spokane and I miss the Pacific Northwest and I just thought that was really fitting uh, for this pack and I think you guys are going to love it. There's so many ways to use this. I think anybody could find a preset in here that they could use over and over for different sessions. And I'm going to show you how to use them and how to get the most out of them. So we have 16 new presets, um, three new profiles, and then uh, some of them do still use the Slow Lake Honey profile, and 20 new brushes. I know that's a lot of brushes, but um, you know, it's like I've been watching people edit for the last 10 months, day in and day out, and you really learn so much. I mean, it's just an interesting position to be in, you know, to see um, how, how so many different people from beginners to pros edit, and, and not only that, but editing people's raw photos and just kind of realizing what is needed and what isn't. Um, so that's why there's so many brushes. I just, there's a lot of times when I feel like, cause I like to do like one to three click edits for edit tests. And there's a lot of times when I wish I had something I could throw on there quick without having to, you know, do a bunch of steps that the person would then have to recreate. Um, I'm all about simplicity. I want, you know, I want there to be a formula for your workflow and um, make it easy for you. So that's what I've tried to do. Uh, yeah, so we have 16 presets. Um, the first five are my favorite. And um, then there are three that are sort of for um, just sort of the average editor or true to life. Uh, then there are three that are a little bit um, like a warm and moody. And then we have the last five are uh, with the Soleil like Honey profile, so really golden and, and sort of filmy. Um, so let's start. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of hard to choose because often like a lot of them will look good, but I'm going to start with my favorites, which are um, double zero through five. And you may wonder why the first one is double zero, and it's because I added it on at the end. Um, yeah, and I have these sorted out by... Um, the first five use the Seattle profile um, and then so on. So the profiles are all together. So I think I'm going to use, um, let's see, I think I liked 04 on this. So I'm going to click it. And here's what you have to do with these first five presets. They start out with these really um, cool undertones. And what you have to do is just add in your temp. So you're fixing your white balance here. And I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to pull up the before. And I want to look at her skin tone, okay? So I'm going to zoom into her skin. And right now I can see blue and pink in her skin. So what I'm going to do is um, neutralize those colors. So we're going to see that? It's like magic. You just pull that temp up and it evens her skin out, makes it look really nice and healthy. And I do still see some pink, <clears throat> excuse me, pink in her skin, but I, you know, I kind of like that. Like she's kiddo and she has pink cheeks and that's fine. So see what that did? We'll go back to single mode. Um, I just think that's so pretty. I'm going to show you again here. You have as shot with those blue undertones. And then after we lifted temp, that really just brought that to life. Um, so that's how you use the first five. You know, really add your temp in there. If you're shooting Kelvin and you shoot, at, you know, at a at a warmer temperature, like you know, seven K or up, you probably won't have to lift temp. But um, the other thing you can do with these is um, a one through a five is um, add in a little magenta to sort of neutralize those teal undertones, if you want. You can try that because sometimes they do go really blue. Like, let me see if I can show you an example. On, um, we'll use this photo, and we'll go ahead and put. Oh, 
I don't want to be too picky because we have a lot of photos, so I don't want to take forever. But let's just use O2. And I like that. That's sort of, um, it, it's sort of a, a vintage, you know, appeal, like the teals and the oranges. Um, but if you boost temp just a little bit, and then if you lift temp, watch what happens. See how you cancel out those teal undertones? Um, so you can, you know, play with temp and tint on these, and it's, I actually think these are going to help people learn white balance, which is, you know, fantastic because white balance is everything. Uh, I actually love that right how it is. Let's see if we got the skin tones right. Pretty close. Pretty close. Um, I might actually bump my tint back down just a little bit. And those skin tones look amazing to me. And I think that's a really pretty edit. I don't know, again, how um, screen recording you know how accurate the screen recording is going to look, but I just want to give you guys kind of the workflow on this. And then let me show you the profiles. So we'll go back to this one since we've already started. Um, these profiles are really unique. It's They're not like the first profiles at all. So there's a lot of settings in these profiles. So you can see if you boost it up, it's going to give you um, more saturation, more contrast. Um, and it actually looks really good on some photos if you boost the profiles. I usually, with these, I've been keeping them around 100. I think that looks best. But also, if you lower them, you start to get this really natural um, looking at it. So let me show you before and after on this. See how, here's default at 100. Um, and then if you pull that down, you start to just get a really subtle edit. And I think some people really will really like that. Uh, let me show you while we are on a photo with a lot of skin showing um, and I think what I'm going to do is just cover you know um, cover this area up so that you can't see the brush settings um, so I'll just walk you through what I'm doing so you know what I'm doing but this will be the best way to show you guys the brushes um, without giving the settings away because I've been working on these brushes for the last six months I think about just you know, obsessing over them. So, um, Silk Skin is the new skin brush. And please, you guys, always have your density at 50. Uh, if you have it all the way up at 100, the brushes are going to be way stronger than they're intended to be. Um, so keep your density at 50. Um, and, yeah, I haven't updated yet, so I don't know if that's changed. I highly doubt it because uh, you kind of need to have that leeway with the brushes here I'm brushing this on her skin and this is really sort of a strong skin brush but it's so pretty it gives a lot of color to the skin a really healthy um, balance like not too warm but not cool it's just a really lovely um, skin tone so I'm gonna brush this on her and then I'm gonna show you what else I would do I'll come over to my amount slider, which is right underneath effect where it says silk skin or whatever the brush name is. The amount slider, um, I would probably pull that down just a little bit. And, oh, there's so many fun brushes in here, guys. Um, let me show you warm drama. So I think a lot of people will like that. Um, so I've chosen the warm drama brush and I'm just going to brush over and then I'm going to give that a little exposure. Yeah, and then I'm going to use one of the new subject um, defining radials. So I'm just going to come over and choose a radial. And for this one, I think I want to use the, there's two subject definers. Um, Subtle Spotlight is just how it sounds, very sort of subtle. Um, I just applied it there. It just gives a nice little pop. Super Soft Subject Define Radial. I don't know why I named them like this. It's kind of silly, but it uh, really tells you what they do. I'm going to click that so you can see that one. That one's a little bit stronger. Um, but, you know, in different scenarios, both would work great. And let's show you the eye brush too while we're on um, a portrait. <clears throat> we have, um, it's called Eye Area Clean and Light Radial. And I name these radials, some of them, because that's what I would um, suggest you use them on. Okay, so I'm gonna put that right over her eye area. 
make it a little smaller, and then I'm just going to duplicate that mask and pull it over to the other eye. And this really does just give a nice natural sort of um, awake look to the eyes. I wouldn't make them too big, but I would make them big enough so that if you're feathered at 100, it touches the whole eye. And then another brush that I really have been loving that you won't be able to see a whole heck of a lot. Actually, I'm not going to use it, but Cherry Chapstick, um, just to bring some color to the lips, is really pretty. And yeah, I think that's it, about it for this one. I think that's a great edit. Gorgeous. I mean, it's just warm and poppy. And I've heard um, a few different people say that they would love to see me make a preset that was sort of in between smaller one um, and um, Marino presets. And I think that I kind of nailed that with these. Um, all right, so let's bring our exposure up a little on this. I want to show you the greens and what these do to greens. Um, I will get out of the, the first five. They really are my favorite, that sort of vintage -y look. Um, but look how pretty that is. I just think this is gorgeous. So what again, what I would do here, because we're on the first five and you do have to, you know, really use your white, white balance on these. I would zoom into my whites and just see, I might, um, I guess I might give that a little bit of temp. And yeah, look how pretty that is. Just soft and inviting, um, gorgeous. And then maybe even bump my tint up a little bit because I don't want to see too much green in her dress. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Let's see before and after. So pretty. And I'll show you another preset on this too. Um, and then while I'm at it, I actually want to show you another brush that I think is really cool. And this was inspired by um, oh, what is it called? I don't know. It's an archipelago, um, preset where they have, um, fog brushes that mimic fog. And that's kind of what gave me the idea for this. I don't own those. I've just seen, you know, seen them and think they're really cool. So I'm giving you guys one in this pack and this is called warm haze. I like to use it on a radial. It starts out really strong. Um, but then you just use your amount slider. So I would pull that down to about there. And look at that. It's just so neat to me. It looks like, literally looks like sun coming through. I don't know, man, like editing, I know I've said this a billion times, but it's just, just so magical to me. Like it's like being a kid and watching a magic trick. Um, so you could pull it down and make it really subtle, or you could you know, have it stronger and really give it a sort of an ethereal glow. But that's just so pretty. There's just so much you can do with this pack and I'm really so excited to watch you guys play with it. I probably in reality would pull it back down a little. And then on a picture like this, I would use, um, I always like to use something to pop my subject out a little bit. But on something soft like this, I would probably use the Subtle Spotlight Radial, and it's really as subtle, um, but it, it does help pop your subjects. Now let me reset this and I'll show you some of the other presets, and we'll get out of one through five. Um, let's see, let me lift my exposure so I can actually see what I'm doing. <clears throat> Six, seven, and eight. Um, are again sort of for just the average um, true to life editors again will be important to use white balance i'm not a huge fan of what that did to the grass and then seven and eight are a little bit more um, soft it's kind of pretty actually um, and if you're not sure, if you're someone who's really not sure uh, what to do with your white balance, just play with it. Um, literally just come over to temp. I'm moving it down right now. And now I'm moving it up. And just see what it does and see what you like. I actually like the cooler green on this, so I would leave that down a little. And then come over to your tint slider. I'm lifting it up. And then I'm bumping it back down. I might actually lift tint up a little bit on this one because um, it's so green and there's so much green. But what you don't want to do is, um, like this, I'm going to boost tint way up. You don't want to do this where there's pink in your whites um, 
and you don't want to do this where there's green in your whites. You want to get it neutral. That's the goal. And you can also look at your skin tones to see if there's any pink, or pink green, um, blue, or yellow. Another thing you can do if you're not aware is take this um, eyedropper and hover over an, a white area. And you can actually see a preview up here of what, you know, watch up there. See, if I clicked the grass to balance my whites, obviously I wouldn't, but let's see what happens if we click that dress. Oh, wow, it did exactly what I did. Did it actually do that? No, pretty close. Um, but yeah, you can use the eyedropper. And the other thing in this pack is that I've built in an alternate white balance tool for you. So if you're stuck on white balance and you're really not sure, um, you can always hover over that to see um, an alternate white balance. Uh, all right, let me show you shown um, six, seven, and eight, and then nine, 10, and 11. Six, seven, and eight use the um, Vancouver profile. These are all Pacific Northwest cities, by the way. Um, yeah, uh, but anyway, let me show you what this does. So if you boost that up, you're getting a lot more contrast and saturation and sort of more boldness. If you pull it down, you're gonna get that really nice, soft, um, subtle edit. See, that's actually really pretty. I'm, I'm saying you guys, there's so many things you can do with these. When you start playing with these profiles, um, there's just so many options. I mean, you could sit here and I do <laughs> all day and edit and play. Um, all right, let's show you some more presets here. Um, where were we at? Now we're on nine through 11. This uses the Ashland profile and it's a really sort of soft, warm, moody group. So I've just applied 09, which is another one of my favorites. And yeah, that's really pretty. Let's see what our alternate white balance would do. I think it's always a good idea just to check white balance um, by hovering over the alternate white balance just to see if, because you may, you may think a photo is perfect. Um, and then, you know, if you do hover over the alternate white balance, oh, wait a minute, that's actually way better. So it's just good to double check, you know. Um, alternate white balance is telling me that it needs to be more magenta. I can just see that, I haven't clicked it yet. Um, but that's, let's see if we click it. Yeah, it added a lot more magenta. And that's actually a really pretty edit with 09. And I can see a little pink in the white, so I'm gonna pull tint down. And that's really what this pack, what you're gonna have to do with this pack, guys, is um, use, you know, rely, rely on your white balance to get, you know, get your um, skin tones and your whites neutralized. With the original pack, um, it was sort of built to make it easy on those who aren't familiar with white balance, with the warmth and the profiles, but this one you're gonna have to really add it in. So, um, did I already show you? No, let's show you what happens when you pull the Ashland profile up. Again, you're getting a lot more depth, color, contrast, and when you pull it down, you're getting a really soft, subtle edit. Okay, so that was 09, and then we just have variations. Um, yeah, 10, 10 is gorgeous on this, look at that. I think those greens are beautiful. I might give it a little warmth, so just bumping up my temp a little, and gosh, that's pretty. Um, there's 11, 11's a little too green for me. And yeah, that's the Ashland group of presets. So let's reset it. And now we get down into what we're all familiar with, which is the Slow Lake Honey profile. Let's pull our exposure up. And I'm not gonna go over these a whole heck of a lot because you guys are already familiar with it. But then we have, um, Slow Lake Honey starts at 12, so there's 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Um, 15 looks really pretty on this from here. Yeah, sort of, um, it's a really soft in the shadows. Um, let's see what happens if we pull highlights down. Uh, I'll pull whites down. Maybe add a little bit of warmth. And you know, you can always just use Slow Like Honey too to add your warmth in on these. 
And 13 is um, by far the coolest preset in the pack um, in terms of greens. And I'm really kind of starting to like these cool bluish greens. Um, but you can always just lift temp a little bit on those and warm them up a little. Um, yeah, but we'll get off of this photo here. I just wanted to sort of run through the presets. Oh, you guys, what I haven't showed you yet is the black and whites. I'm so excited about these. Um, I'm, I've am i always been a black and white fanatic, and I love creating black and whites. It's such a trip, you guys, to have people to um, share my presets with and, like, get excited over them with me. I just, you guys will never know what a trip it is for me. So thank you for being, you know, who you are and here and, yeah, just so cool. But let me show you the black and whites. These are really, this may be the wrong photo. Let me pick a better photo. Um, let's see. Oops. Let's use, we'll use this one. And I, I don't know who did these, you guys. I Today was such a hectic day just trying to get this out for you that I have no idea. But um, here's black and white 01. They're just so soft and like velvety and deep. Um, oops, 02. This also may be the wrong photo for this because you can't really see. So anyway, the black and whites go from deepest, um, middle, and then lightest. Um, but I think you guys are going to fall in love with the black and white presets. So let's choose a preset for this one real quick. Um, I don't want to make this too long. I just really wanted to show you guys how to adjust um, the first. Um, it's actually... It's actually six presets now because I added the new one in. You guys, I had to count. <laughs> I just had to literally count what, how many would it be if there's zero, zero through oh five? Like, duh, that's six. I just, it's been, it's been a long year, okay? Very long year. Um, so it looks like I landed on oh five there by, on accident. But let's stick with oh five. I would bump my temp a little. Look at that, so pretty. Whose photo is this? I love it. And then once you have your white balance kind of set, um, you can just scroll through the other ones and see if the tones in, um, I really like the tones in 04. <clears throat> and I do like a light photo, so that's probably why I'm drawn to that. Um, but yeah, play with the profiles. Um, there's just so many, there's no mods in this pack because I didn't want to add in too much and confuse people or give you too many options, um, you know, or kill you with like decision paralysis, which I tend to get myself. So, um, you know, use the profiles to, for your variety. Uh, let's see. Oh, this one I wanted to show you is a great example of using these with the, um, these bright greens, these neon greens. I would use 06 on this. Like I said, 06, 07, and 08 are just really reliable um, presets for true life. Um, yeah, that's actually really pretty, and it only took me one click. And it didn't make a massive difference, but sometimes you don't want a massive difference. You know, you just want a nice clean edit. Um, let's see if we pull our profile up. We're just getting more contrast and saturation down, more of a natural edit. Gosh, it's almost 9 p.m. here. I'm going to try to um, not make this last forever so I can actually get these out to you guys. Uh, what other cool brushes do we have? Oh, I included the brush on levels. This is not obviously the same as levels, but it does give you that sort of punch um, in case you don't have time to take something into Photoshop. Um, I just used brush on levels there. And let's erase that. And let me show you a different one. Um, we have one called Warm Light Leak. And I would sort of use this as a um, radial, just to give sort of a sunset, sunset glow. And I know I showed this in the um, first PAX tutorial, but if you missed it, I like to use the sunset brushes, like this um, light leak or sunset glow, on a massive radial, okay? And you just pull it into the photo, just like sunset, like like the sun is coming in on them. 
you see how that sort see how natural that sort of looks like when you really make it big and diffuse and pull it in on them like that um, okay let me see what other brushes I just want to make sure I go through these brush brushes with you guys uh, this audio's flaming skin um, when you get like the red ears or even red noses during the winter um, that brush will you can brush over to like erase red skin um, bright and shadowy group of people is really good for weddings like if you have a wedding party that's really dark um, I'll show you on this it's not gonna be right for this photo but you know that's what it's gonna so, you know I, I've edited so many weddings that I've gotten my bright and shadowy groups uh, you know settings down so that's where that one came from and let's see what else do we have in here Oh, did I just duplicate that? Yeah, I did. Let me delete it and delete that one. And what else? Um, cherry Chapstick. Oh, Creamy and Sharp is a brush that I think a lot of people will like. Um, let me actually select a brush here. Creamy and Sharp is that sort of really painterly... Um, look that a lot of people are like how do you get that look this brush will do it it's not obviously it's just not right for this photo but let me find a photo that it might be right on I already edited this one with I forget what it was but we will reset this and um, I'm gonna show you that creamy and sharp brush let me bump my exposure here and want to use I actually like 13 on this it's those cool greens um, I might give it a little actually no I want to use I want to use oh four and you sort of have to have a vision with these two guys like if you want that sort of really deep like the deep browns and the sort of um, you know teals and the whites you have to have a vision for it and be able to look at it and say okay this is gonna be beautiful what do I need to do so here I do want those teal and the whites and the really deep um, you know sort of browns and the greens so I'm going to make it work by adjusting my white balance and I can see some pink in his skin so I'll come up to tint and pull my tint slider towards green just taking magenta out of it and it's actually a little bit warm for me this um, photo whoever took this probably shot Kelvin and um, so their temp is high so I'm gonna pull the temp down just a little bit and then I'm gonna show you this brush actually let's crop this in a little um, let me show you this creamy and sharp brush Man, I wish I could be doing this when I wasn't so tired, you guys. I'm so sorry. I made you wait all day. Um, but yeah, let's brush this on. And then we're going to pull the amount down a little bit. And yeah, it just gives that sort of... Um, I, I don't even know what to call it. It's, it's just a really popular look with the bold and vibrant people. Uh, I see it all the time, like the really deep darks and the really creamy skin. Um, and then let's put the warm drama brush on too. And see how we're really just popping everything out. And I would brush the skin. And yeah, that's quite the edit. I love it. It's very pretty. As a last step, I would to also always um, double check your exposure and just make sure and yeah I think that's really pretty I might pull tint down just a little more out of that yeah um, yeah and then I would actually use one of the two subject pop radials um, let's see what super soft sub subject define looks like yeah that's a little bit more of a bold sub uh, subject radial but I would pull the amount down on that Use the amount slider for these, um, especially if you forget to set your density at 50, you're gonna have to use the amount slider. Um, but let's show you another one. This one I loved the outcome of. 
I think I did use one of these, probably used all four. And then watch what temp does, you guys. I just, if, if you take nothing else from me rambling in this video, um, take my advice with the temp. So see that? Look at the colors in the back. You get those really pretty fall colors, but you still keep the cool tones, the cool undertones, and your, um, you know, whites are still crisp. I just think that's gorgeous. And let me also show you, I might pull a little tint out of that. Um, let me also show you again how I would use the Warm Haze brush, because this is really a different brush um, that you're, you know a lot of people would not be used to using. So I would just pull it down like that on the treetops and use that amount slider to make it a little bit more subtle. But yeah, that's, that's just such a neat effect. Like if you pull it up to 200, obviously, you know, just so you can see what it does, but, um, you know, down a little bit, it just really does remind me of like the haze you see in the mountains in the um, Pacific Northwest. Uh, but yeah, look at those tones. I just think they're so pretty. Um, and again, once you have your white balance set, you can kind of scroll through these other, the other presets in the group. You know what I mean? Um, and see if there's one you like better. I like zero, zero on this too. Maybe pull it down. I'm pulling my profile up. Give it a little more exposure. Yeah, there's just a million ways. This is not a preset pack where you click the preset and you're done. You know, you have um, the profiles to, to play with and that just makes the biggest difference. Like, there's just so, it's like having multiple presets in one preset. Uh, let me show you some other ones here. I loved how this one turned out. This is so stinking cute. Look at that little baby. Uh, I think I liked 04. I will show some other ones. I'm just so in love with these ones. Now watch what happens, okay? All I'm doing is lifting up the temp slider. And look at that. It just brings those colors to life. You have to give it a little exposure here. But yeah, it just brings those colors right to life. Again, this is as shot. Very blue. That's one click with the presets. Very blue. Um, you know, if you delivered a photo that looked like that, the client would be like, what are you doing? And rightfully so. It's just so simple. Just bump up your temp. Oh, so pretty. And then maybe pull tint up and down and see. Um, I actually liked tint how where it was. Uh, and let me actually show you too what you can do with, um, this might not be the, I was going to show you what you can do with skin that gets a little bit too warm. We have a brush for that. Um, where can I find, I know there's a photo in here where the skin might go too warm, but I got to find it. Is it this one? Yep, this is the one. So I'm going to show you how to use another one of these brushes here. Let's go ahead and put 04 on it and check our exposure. Exposure is good where it's at. And if I wanted to lift temp, because I do see a tiny bit of blue in his, um, in the side of his face right there. So when I lift my temp, because she's a very tan individual, her face is going way too warm, right? Well, we have a brush for that now. So coming in and selecting a radial gradient and there's a brush called um, Tame Warm Skin Radio, and it says right next to the brush, um, adjust amount. So that's letting you know that, you know, don't just apply it and run away, um, apply it and adjust your amount. So I've applied it, and then I'm gonna pull that amount slider down and see how easily I can, um, you know, tone her skin there, super easy. And it doesn't have to be perfect, right? So here's on zero, that's what it looks like without. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. See, it's touching him a little bit, it's touching her hair a little bit. It's not a big deal because our feather is at 100. And that means that it's really only affecting that area right there. So I'm pulling my amount up and um, I'm just toning her skin. Yeah, so that allows me to get the warmth I want in the overall photo 
while keeping my skin tones good. Uh, love this. Love this photo, by the way. I forget who did this. Wait, let me stop and think. Was it? No, I'm. my brain is mush, you guys. Total mush. Uh, I don't remember, but these photos are amazing. Um, what about 09 on this? Kind of like that, too. Um, she's just a little warm, so yeah, I would have to use that radial again. Um, but that's how you use that. Let's see. Let's try another one here with some whites and some greens. Let's go up through the bottom and see what we like. I'm starting down at 16 because I'm addicted to um, double zero through 05, so I don't want to start there again. Um, six, this uh, last one that's 16 is a really sort of bright, warm, very traditional sort of Arno look. If you have a signature style and you're worried that maybe the, you couldn't make these work, I think you would love um, PNW 16. Maybe pull exposure down a little, highlights down a little, maybe. Let's see before and after. Yeah, that's so pretty. I hate that I say so pretty over and over, but I'm sorry it is. It's so pretty. Um, let's see. 15 is a little cooler. 14 is much cooler. Let's see what we could do with 14. Boost our temp up. That makes the skin tones go a little bit too warm for my taste, so I would not choose that one. Um, 13 is cool. We'll just add our warmth in. That's actually a really classic, sort of clean, um, clean and classic edit. I do like that. Um, 12 is gorgeous. Uh, I love 11. 11 has those really um, velvety, sort of soft shadows. Here's 10. I do, the Ashland profile is one of my favorite profiles in a long time. Um, just has such a warm, sort of inviting feeling. Um, and you also can do a lot with whites and highlights on these. I left them high so that you would have some, you know, sort of some leeway in there. But if you pull your whites down, you get a really soft, um, just sort of creamy edit. Pull it back up. I like bright whites in my own photos, but. I don't think I like the Vancouver profile on these, on this photo. So let's see if we, I'm gonna pull my exposure down just a little bit more. Uh, look at that, I just, these tones, I die for them. I'm gonna pull my temp up a little and maybe pull my whites down, oh. Um, yeah, O2 ha has a little bit more saturation and depth in the shadows. I do like that. But here, instead of playing with the profiles primarily like you did with the original pack, um, focus on white balance. Um, if you're used to adjusting your profile to get the warmth you want, start using um, temp instead for this pack. And it's really going to affect your skin tones too. So if you're big on skin tones, like let's see before and after here. Wow, she has really sort of a pink, pinky skin tone to begin with. Um, but I actually think this is a lot more flattering on her in a photo. You know what I mean? Um, but you could just, if you want to pull your magenta up to really match her skin tone, you could do that. I mean, that's a pretty solid skin tone match right there. Just a little bit more contrast in this one. Um, but that's, yeah, that's a gorgeous edit. Let's see, 03. Four. I love the tones in 04. Pull temp up. It's just so warm and inviting and pretty. Um, let me show you again because I do like these pretty warm. How I would use the Tame Warm Skin Radial. Uh, where is it? Here we go. And just draw it right over the, the um, you know, really hot skin tones and use the amount slider. And that's probably how I'd leave it. Yep. Yeah, so pretty. Uh, and then the warm light leak brush, I would use on a radial. You can always use it on a brush too. Um, just a brush over like the sunset areas, but let's find it 
here or might leak I have a radial gradient and I'm just gonna pop that up here back in the area where the sunset is and I always think it's kind of fun to like play with the positioning I, I would always follow the actual position of the light but if you do draw this radial really big and sort of just again bring it in off the page and even let it hit your subject a little bit you can give the subject the appearance of having a little bit more light touching them it's just fun to play with and I I also would always use the amount slider for the um, the uh, sunset radials yeah I think that's beautiful let's see another one with greens because I know everyone is um, Everybody wants to see greens on presets, and I do too. If I was going to buy a preset, I wouldn't care what it looked like, you know, on perfect conditions. Like, I want to see it on greens. Um, there's a double zero. Should I call it OO or double zero? Zero, zero, double zero, OO. I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, let's lift exposure a little bit. And these are not nearly as brightening as the um, original pack. The original pack works really well for light and airy. Um, and this is going to work a lot better for soft and moody and sort of vintage tones. Um, yeah, you can see it. Let me side by side it so you can actually see what it's doing to the greens. There we have a one is a little bit um, warmer greens, a little poppier greens. O2 is a very muted green. O3, again, very muted green. Uh, O4 is probably my favorite in the whole pack. Either that or O0. Temp a little bit. Lift exposure a little bit. Wow, that's, that's gorgeous. You know what I'm going to do with this? Watch this. This is going to be awesome. This is why brushes are... You know, I always say it's worth having... Um, LRC for brushes and this is why you got to watch what I'm gonna do 13 is the most unique green I think in the pack um, and again this is one that uses slow like honey um, so you can adjust the warmth up here with uh, the profile but you know that's a really traditional green there and I wanted you know I wanted to add that because I know there's people that love that um, cool you know cool green um, and rightfully so it's it's a very pretty green another thing you can do with your greens is come down to HSL and in luminance your yellows and your green slider is going to be what controls the greens so if right now I'm pulling luminance down on the yellows and you can see how it really deepens those um, greens pull green luminance down See how you get a really rich um, color out of that? So that's kind of a, a tip you can use for any of the presets, but um, I think on 13 especially that will work really well. Uh, but yeah, let me show you what I would do on this. So I'm gonna go back and use 04 for that sort of, um, you know, 70s appeal. Let's pull exposure down just a touch. And I'm going to use that warm haze on a linear. I, I haven't done this yet, so I don't know what it's going to look like, but I think it's going to be amazing. Okay, I'm going to take it from the top down. Get out. Seriously, get out. That's too, it's too good. I freaking love it. Look at that. That's so cool. Now I'm going to go back up and adjust the amount slider oh <laughs> you guys I'm so tired like I just have not gotten much sleep lately and I'm also sick I've like woke up with the worst sore throat I'm like no not today um, so I may be a little bit loopy but love this brush okay I need to hurry up because I know you guys want me to release these let me show you a traditional bridal portrait here and um, I think 06 is gorgeous on this this is that Vancouver profile that's the really um, just a clean you know traditional edit but that that's one click with 06 um, 
show you before and after. Just a very clean, traditional edit. You get those, um, just a hint of teal in the highlights, a really soft, pretty look. Um, and and teal and orange is a, you know, a good, um, they're complementary colors and just a good way to go, you know. Um, here you can see what double uh, zero through 05 looks like on white, and they do give you a really heavy green um, slash teal, depending on which one you pick in the whites. And if you do like that soft sort of vintagey look, but you don't love that color in the whites, you can do a couple things. I would maybe lift temp a little bit, and you see how that turns that um, that teal into sort of a creamy, um, almost it's it's like a cream color actually is what it is. Uh, and then the other thing you can do is just bump tint, um, tint a little bit and it will cancel out those, um, those greens. But I do love that color in white. I think it gives a really lovely sort of soft vintage look. I mean, look at that. That's If, if I was this bride and I got this photo, it would be my profile picture like in a second. It's so pretty. Um, but yeah, just wanted to show you a bridal portrait there. Let's quickly show you here um, like a family portrait. And here, this is good because we have some really pale baby skin. Um, let's see. Let's say we wanted to use O2. And again, we click that and it's the one we're used to using and then it's the one we like. And suddenly we click it and we're like, oh wait, that doesn't look good at all. Well, it's because you have to adjust your white balance. Um, so again, there's two ways. You can use the eyedropper and hover over a white area and click that white. See what that did right away. It really, really did, um, you know, quite a bit. And this entire image looks good except for the baby. She looks very pale and washed out. So what I would do, and actually mom is looking a little bit blue. So let's see what her original skin tone is. Yeah, she has one of those really tough to work with skin tones, um, but I would pull to, that was the result of um, Lightroom and the eyedropper. I did not do that white balance. I'm, I'm good at white balance. Uh, Lightroom sometimes is not good at white balance. I would put a little pink back into her skin tone, so just lift tint. And this is how I adjust my white balance. Um, I, sometimes I'll just do it by sight, like pulled out like this, and sometimes I zoom right in on the skin get in there and really analyze the undertones. Um, and that's just how it works best for me. But yeah, we have a, we have really different skin tones here. We have dad with a really ruddy skin. Um, you know, he has that r super red undertone. And then mom has um, a couple of different, well, she has makeup on, which can really um, be tough to edit. Like, Foundation reflects light in different ways, and I don't know, I just hate it. Um, but yeah, and then the baby, super pale, like very different skin tones. But here's how we can fix it. So we have a new brush called, what did I name it? More Color in Skin. So I'm going to click that, and I have a radial filter. And again, this may look ridiculous at first, but we're going to use the amount slider to um, perfect it. So I'm going to put that right over the baby. And it doesn't matter if it's a little bigger, that's fine. You can always erase, um, you know, if you come up to the mask here and just click the subtract sign, it'll give you an option of how you want to erase. Um, but yeah, so we're going to make the baby a little less pale. And I would probably leave it right about there. And then you can come up to your temp and tint on that brush and even lift temp a little bit on her um, you can lower your highlights on her but use your radial filters for these um, you know it's just when you guys see like amazing edits that you're like oh it looks you know perfect and how did they do that brushes radials you know linears it's it's never just a one click um, yeah I actually like that let's see
that one looks good, 14. Oh, 13 actually looks really good on this. I would give it a little temp. Um, yeah, I can't imagine, uh, that's really pretty. I can't imagine having this pack and not being able to find an edit for something. You know what I mean? I just, I've been using it for a very long time now. And uh, yeah, there's been like one or two photos I've come across that I haven't been able to find a good edit for, but um, very, very rarely. Uh, let's try this one. This is a different photo with the um, blue and it's a little bit underexposed. So let's see what we can do here. We'll lift our exposure a little so we can see what we're doing. And start at double zero and just click down. And again, you really can't judge the first um, six presets by just hovering over them because you really do have to adjust your white balance with those or they're you know very teal um, but let's just click through that's really pretty six sometimes I think it's helpful to have a side-by-side -side open as you're um, clicking through the presets so you can see what looks the most natural there's seven eight nine oh I love I love oh nine with the Ashland profile it's, love it love it uh, highlights down. I might pull my exposure up a little. <clears throat> if this were my photo, I would probably leave it really soft and a little underexposed like that. See what happens when we lift temp. Yeah, that's that's just gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, that was nine. Here's ten. Eleven. It's a little brighter. Twelve is a little bit um, more muted. 13. I wonder what that would look like with extra exposure with those greens. Eh, nope, not right for this photo. 14. Ooh. And 16. 16 is really pretty, actually. Let me try 16 with the alternate white balance. Nope, too warm. Yeah, I might like that one best. Um, I'm pulling this little like, honey profile up. And down. All right, I think I like, it really doesn't matter because it's not my photo. I think I liked 06 best on that one. Okay, anyway, we're gonna move on because like I said, I don't want this to last forever and ever and have you guys get really bored. Um, and again, I know you want me to get this the heck out so you can use these. I wanna show you how you can make a really light ethereal edit with um, like the golden grass situation. I'm gonna pull this up, and this isn't JPEG. This is um, I know who this is. This is my friend Tiffany's, and um, she's really good at brushes. And I think she's gonna have some um, like brush tutorials coming out soon, uh, and just give you all the tips and tricks on um, how to brush your photos so that they look really, you know, dramatic and polished, and like the wow images. You know what I mean? Uh, let's see, I think I liked, let's just go with double zero, we'll lift our exposure, and see those tones you start getting? Um, there's something about the teal in the um, highlights that just looks amazing on skin. I don't know exactly what it is, probably because it's canceling out some of the orange and it just creates a really lovely um, neutral skin tone so four two five which one do I like yeah I love this really soft ethereal look and then um, when I edited this for a test when I was asking for like test images I remember I ended up taking the warm haze brush again and pulling it over and then I know this looks crazy right now, but just give me give me the benefit of the doubt here. Now I'm coming to my amount slider and I'm sliding it down almost to zero. And see how that just gives a really um, ethereal. It's like it looks like a dream, you know what I mean? But I have the amount slider at 17 with warm haze there. And holy smokes, that is gorgeous. Can you imagine a whole gallery like that? It would be incredible. 
Uh, let's see, which other one do I want to use? Did that one? Here's a good one to use. This is like super neon grass, and then we have super pale baby. So let's see what we can do. Um, and I'm sure I don't have to say it again, but you have to adjust white balance on the first six presets. Sometimes you can get away with like, oh, six looks pretty good, one click. Um, and then 07 and 08 are just muted versions of 06. And then 09 sometimes can look pretty good, one click. 10, 11, and then um, 16 will probably always look good, one click, because it does have the Slow Lake Honey profile. Um, but, oops, yeah, there's um, PNW 16, one click. I think that looks really good, uh, especially for the conditions with, you know, the super, super green grass. Um, and being able to one click a photo like that is pretty spectacular. I would always mess with my exposure before I do too much else. Uh, but let's see if we can make one of my favorites work. Let's see what we can do with 04, okay? And it might not work, might not be the right preset for this, but I just wanna play and see. And this is what I would suggest you guys do. Don't just go for the easiest preset. Um, you know, really get in here and play with them. Now see, all I did was left lift um, temp, and already that looks so much better. And I actually end up liking this one better, um, even though it did not look good on one click. I do like it. So let me zoom in and see the undertones. There's a little bit of blue in the skin, so I may have to continue lifting temp. Uh, yeah, right about there looks good. And anytime someone has super pale skin, I would probably just use the subtle spotlight um, subject pop so you don't overexpose their skin in the process. I'll show you what the other one would look like. Super soft, subject define radial, but it's a little brighter. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think considering that's sort of a tough photo to edit, adorable baby, I would love to just be able to hang out with that baby for like 10 minutes. Babies are so sweet and they just, they give you their good energy, you know? So you can also pull the amount down on the super soft subject to find. If you do want a little bit brighter than, um, than the spotlight one, you can just use that. Uh, you guys are gonna start hearing my dogs now too. Um, that's real quickly, this is Jess. Uh, oh, Jess, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Is it Ayala? I Ayala? Anyway, we know who I'm talking about, right? This is her photo. And this is so pretty. And my computer just got unplugged. So my screen dimmed. Hang on just a second. By a doggy. A doggy did it. There we go. Okay, let's see what we can do with Jess's photo. Um, oh, I just, this, I love these teal undertones. They're killing me lately. That's almost just like one click right there would be amazing. Um, let's try O2 and let's get some of that blue neutralized with temp. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at that. Just the skin tones get nice and creamy and like all the greens, it really, really is reminiscent of Pacific Northwest colors. And these look really good with the whites down too if you like like a softer filmier edit. Oh, I've got to show you guys the um, Violet Sky brush. Do we have one in here that has a sky? I don't think so. Oh, we don't. Dang it. Um, yeah, I don't think this photo has a sky. Let's see. Oh, maybe a little bit. It does. You can always tell if you can bring your sky back at all if you just lower your exposure. Um, you can see that there is a really pretty sky back there. But I would have done exactly what Jess did, which is exposed for the people. I would rather have, um, you know, my humans looking well exposed than a sky. I just don't care that much about the sky. I'm, you know, concerned with how my people look. So let's select our sky. And I did not update yet because um, I didn't want this 
tutorial to have to be put off any longer. Um, so I don't know what the new ones are like, but anyway, I'm clicking Violet Sky and oh, I'm dead. That's so pretty. Oh, so pretty. I can't handle it. I would probably bump exposure just a little. I would definitely put a subject um, pop on them. And yeah, I would use the super soft subject to find. Wow, that's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's see before and after. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm dead. So pretty. So pretty. Okay, I need to stop saying so pretty, but it really is so pretty. Which one did I use on that? I think I used 03 or 04. Don't remember. Either way, gorgeous. All right. Um, let's again see. Oh, let's see a hazy photo just to show you. Let's get away from my favorites for a minute and let's use um, eight, nine. Let's use nine. And for this one, I would start with white balance. Bump my temp up. And because it is golden hour, you can get away with, um, you know, having your temp up quite a bit. And uh, yeah, I would probably brighten the subjects. Again, I'm gonna use that super soft subject to find. And I might add, you don't have to leave these brushes the way they are either, guys. You can, you know, eat, like add a little extra exposure or um, move the temp around on it. You know, you don't have to just use the brushes how they are. Uh, yeah, so they work on hazy photos too. And see how like 09 is a really nice, warm, soft, velvety preset. And then see the difference between like, here's 02 with the teal highlights and the blues. When you get those blues in there, it just gives you that, um, you know, that sort of vintagey appeal. Here's bumping the profile up. You could Bring your exposure back down a little. Just tons of things you could do. Um, what else? What other brushes do I have to show you guys? Uh, I had planned on sitting down and doing every single one of these. Um, but, um, oh, here's one that I think looks amazing, black and white. Look at that. Oh, just the depth in the background is gorgeous. Um, and here you can see too how a lot of these presets keep the colors pretty true to life. Like there is 06. Look at there's 04. See how you still keep some cool tones, um, you know, in the light, in the grays and the whites. Um, you could always, you probably would on this photo have to bring your temp down a little. Yeah, I'd probably leave it like that. Um, oh, what other brushes do I have to show you guys before I get the heck off of here and let you purchase these if you would like? Let me just take a look-see. There are 20 brushes. I know that's a lot. And what I did was I um, prefaced them with the letter A so that they would all show up first for you. So we have Audio's Flaming Skin um, for red ears and... Um, just any red skin, even underexposed shadowy skin that gets red, you could use that brush on. Um, bright and shadowy group of people. Brush on levels, again, which is just going to give you some pop. Um, cherry chapstick for lips. You can also use that on cheeks just to give a little color. Creamy and sharp. Let's show you that one here real quick because I don't think I did get to show you that one very well. Little exposure. Again, I'm on density 50, always with my brushes. Right, creamy and sharp, here we go. Let's see, it's probably really hard to see on a screen recording, um, but see what that did? It just gave that really sort of soft, you know, dreamy, a little bit of like punch in there too. Let's see if I can show you without, we'll hide that mask and then we will put that mask back on. See, see, see. When you get the brushes, you'll be able to see what it does. 
Um, but where were we? Okay, so creamy and sharp. Let's get back in here. Dark hair saver. So when somebody has, um, here we'll go. Let's see, we'll go back to this one. When someone has dark hair, sometimes it will get lost in the shadows and just kind of look like a black hole instead of hair, you know what I mean? Um, so you can take the dark hair saver and just brush over the hair, the really dark parts of the hair. And, br you know, instead of overexposing it, you're just bringing out the highlights and sort of defining it. Um, so that's dark hair saver. Let's go... Go here and pop one on this. Uh, see what else we can use real quick. Um, eye area clean and light. I showed you that. Eyebrow filler inner. I don't think I have showed you guys that, but it's super self-explanatory. Sometimes if you're doing portraits, um, the eyebrows can sort of get lost, or especially if there's flash, um, the eyebrows can start to look a little bit washed out which really makes a huge difference just watch like obviously I would never do this to a child because you know kids don't typically have dark eyebrows but um, I mean do they I don't know maybe dark-haired kids do I don't know uh, okay so I'll just show you how to use it so you get it real small make sure density is at 50 and um, it's gonna look really dark at first but I'll show you what happens so you just brush it on and then you take your amount slider and I would probably slide it all the way down to zero and then just lift it up until, yep, eyebrows are defined. That's why I would use that. And then we have more color and skin. I showed you how to do that. I'll actually show you again right here on a radial because I, I just want to make sure you guys know how to use these and that if you're going to pay for something, you should, you know, you should have some instructions come with it in my opinion. Um, so for more color and skin, just draw it over. Of course, that looks ridiculous right away. Pull it down to zero, and then you're just going to pull it up slowly until you feel like there's enough color in the skin. Um, and she didn't need it, so it probably doesn't look great on her because she just her skin already looked good. So let's take it off. But that's how you do that. Um, oh, here's one. Real looking white teeth. Uh... The teeth setting that Lightroom gives you is so ridiculous, okay? Don't use that. It looks so fake. I, I just hate it when like I'm looking at a photo and and then you're distracted by how white the teeth are. But this is a very natural... The, these are the settings I've used for years and years for teeth. Tried and true. Shadows off faces. Um, that's one that I hope people use, okay? Because... I see shadowy faces a lot. Let me just show you. There's probably, oops, what happened? Um, yeah, I see. I see this a lot where the faces get really shadowy for some reason, um, and people just kind of ignore it, or maybe they don't know what to do with it. You know, uh, that's not the best photo for it, guys. Oh, here's one. This is a good one. This is our. I believe this is Elizabeth. Um, Holmgren, is that how we pronounce her name? But this is, I believe this is a self-portrait. Look at that edit, I love that right there. So shadows off faces, um, pretty self-explanatory, but I would take a radial, oh dang it, that's not what I wanted. I'm, uh, hopefully I can just crash after this, you guys like literally fall asleep. Okay, so I'm clicking shadows off faces and I'm drawing it over and to see how, what a subtle difference that makes. You may not be able to see it on a screen recording, um, but it's important, you know, I think in any photo to have the subjects well uh, lit. I mean, obviously light is gonna do that best for you, but if you don't have the light, use your radials and use your tools. So that's shadows off faces. And I can't handle that this needs temp. I can't, I can't, so let me do that first. Oh, <laughs> my little doggie is chasing her tail. That's what that sound is. Um, okay, let me get back here. Silk skin, we know what that is. Subtle spotlight, we've covered that. Super soft. 
tame worm skin we've covered. Uh, transition lens fix is just self-explanatory again. Um, you're gonna brush it over transition lenses that get dark. And often you'll find when you have weddings and there's a group of people, um, a lot of times someone will you know have transition lenses and you can't ask them to take it off because it's like their glasses, you know? So that's what that is. And you know, paint it on the lens and then adjust the amount. Violet sky, warm drama. Uh, I don't think I um, demonstrated that very well yet, but for warm drama, it's just literally one of those overall brushes where you are going to um, brush it over the whole image. Or you don't have to, I mean, you could just brush it like over here um, in the you know, environment if you don't want to touch your people. But it just gives you some depth and warmth. And I actually think this would look amazing with the Creamy and Sharp brush. If you can double those up. Yeah, look at that, that's really pretty. Uh, and then we're down to the end. Warm Drama, Warm Haze, we've covered that multiple times. And Warm Light Leak, which is just, again, um, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Girls! No. Sorry guys, this is, I didn't mean to do that. Um, you know, obviously I'm working out of my house, so I have dogs and they make noise. Um, but yeah, warm light week I think I've showed you. And I think that's it. I think we've gone through everything. Um, oh, this is just one last one I want to show you guys with the, those neon greens. Uh, which one was it? Was it 12, 13? I think it was 12 that I loved. Look at that. That's just so good. It just, it, honestly, it looks like it would be in a magazine. Whoever took this photo, oh, shoot, I don't know if I got permission to use this photo. If I didn't, I am so sorry. And this is your photo. Contact me if you're upset and we'll make it right. Um, but yeah, that's it, you guys. Um, I am exhausted. I've been working on these for so long and it's the end of my busy season, so I'm very tired and I very much appreciate you guys hanging in there with me and just, you know, sticking around the group even though sometimes it's chaotic and sometimes you wait a long time for post approvals. Um, I really appreciate you guys and that's it. I'm going to get these um, presets and profiles and brushes up so you can purchase them. Um, as an expansion and I probably haven't mentioned this yet but if you if I do end up listing them such that anyone can buy them do not buy them if you don't own the slowly cutting profile because you won't be able to use the presets that use that profile so don't do it these will be released to everyone in January um, yeah so that's it I love you guys to death and thank you for sticking through my rambling video and that's it bye